more build up to the Republic of Ireland versus Canada in the World Cup this afternoon. One o'clock kickoff. Delighted to say, Maeve De Burger, Irish international, joins us in studio. Maeve, good morning. How are things? All good. Yeah, a bit nervous, but. I'm gonna say I was just chatting yeah. during the ad break there. I'm nervous as well. Like, is that just because the jeopardy is on the line today that it's all kind of come down to this and the dominoes, not to be negative, could come falling down today after such a long build up? That's it. It's going to be a monumental day either way, I think. Um, you know, hopefully for for all good reasons and hopefully they can get a result and keep the work of Dream alive. There's been a bit of smack talk. Maybe not as much smack talk as in advance of the Australia game, but, you know, the Canada manager talking about the um, the quality, hoping his team can, can bring out their quality. Felt like a slight dig in terms of the maybe lack of quality comparatively with Ireland, but... You kind of you kind of like to see that sort of thing in a build up to a game. It it adds a bit of juice to it. Exactly. Yeah. There's definitely a bit of kind of spice before this one. And um, she did mention though in the press conference that that it's going to be a bit of two way traffic. She referred to Ireland as been a horrible team to play against, but then also in turn said, well, you know, it's yeah two way traffic basically, and that um, Canada are you know not the nicest team to play against either. So I think um, it'll be interesting. We only played them once before, so it'll be that was nearly a decade ago at this stage. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Because they don't score many goals. Like the, the I guess if Canada had beaten Nigeria 3 or 4 nil, we'd be going into this game with a little bit of trepidation but the, f- the performance from the Canadians wouldn't have filled their fans full of optimism because they, they really are struggling in the recent games to score goals they are and I mean for a team that's ranked 7th you know the pressure is on them and should be have been a relatively although obviously Australia are there as well it should have been a relatively easy group they wouldn't have looked at the group as been been very difficult so um, yeah the, the opening day draw for them was a disappointment and like I said the lack of goals is worrying as well but they have Jessie Fleming coming back and she's kind of like a playmaker so I think it might change with her introduction maybe to today because all the Canadian play by all accounts comes through her so I guess that that is one excuse for that Nigerian performance like how big is a, is the return of Jesse Fleming I guess it gives Vera Pau a massive headache that otherwise wouldn't have been there yeah I mean she also takes penalties and Sinclair missed a penalty in the last game not saying Jesse would have definitely scored but she has a good record and she scored um, in the Olympics a couple of penalties and as well in the penalty shootout in the Olympics so yeah it definitely gives um, Vera Pau an added dimension to try to you know um, I suppose keep Jesse Fleming under control and that's always going to um, kind of take up then maybe one of our players could be possibly Denise who will end up in maybe in there because she is holding mid at the moment um, or, or Rusha as well so it kind of yeah it's, it's just another dimension like I said and it kind of it may take away from our game going forward as if we needed anything else to take away from it going forward because we're already limited enough in, in how we do um, attack the games You've been covering a lot of the uh, games may have across the board and like there's been we were chatting to Linda earlier on about like there's been uh, some surprise results obviously and like our own uh, 1-0 against Australia was nearly a surprise almost in itself but is there a bit of a um, do you think like internally because you can have tournaments like that where the underdog is causing a lot of upsets and it can be a bit of a um, momentum thing almost with teams that they can kind of tap into that is that um, nonsense from the outside or is there could there be something in that from the Ireland team point of view today in the sense that they're looking around them they're looking at their own performance and thinking whereas this might have been a ludicrous notion a couple of months ago suddenly everything's on the table today yeah, and I, in particular, I think Philippines beating um, New Zealand yesterday was a huge result because yeah. that was um, for the first time the debutants scored and, and won. So, yeah, I think in the opening day, all all the teams that were at their first World Cup, the eight of them all lost. So Ireland, obviously, amongst them. So, yeah, I think um, the gaps are definitely closing. And, um, yeah, I think just Philippines yesterday was really, um, was definitely a shock result. And um, like that, Ireland, I think they'll be happy if they can pull off another shock result today as well, definitely. How good is Christine Sinclair? Because like you, you, you look at her still looking to score in her sixth uh, World Cup, which is an unbelievable record. Like her, her numbers are just 190 goals, 324 games, beggar's belief. But she's she, even at 40, she's still a very, very big danger. Yeah, insane really yeah, that that she is operating at that level you know at, at 40 like you said it's it's not really um, heard of apart from Martha I suppose who's um, who's also you know um, still still operating albeit as a sub but um, yeah I think Sinclair is definitely you know she's a very powerful and, and different player to what they, they'd be used to but the likes of Louise Quinn and Aoife you know would be used to that kind of physicality and that and um, yeah I, I 
it's hard to tell what she'll do but I would expect her to be dropped in, in place of Fle- Fleming today but uh, either way if she's on the bench then it's not someone that you want to see coming on the pitch you know in the last half an hour or, or however long she gets but uh, it is, it's a daunting task but like that I mean Ireland have been faced up with a lot of um, technical and um, difficult forwards in the past so I'm sure they'll be well equipped like with everything with video analysis everything now they'll know her strengths and their weaknesses to a T so they'll be able to deal with her hopefully we were chatting this morning about um, Vera Power pointing out the lack of pace at the Irish back line and even after the Australia game against Marissa Shiva bore the brunt of some of if not all of the blame uh, based on that defeat what do you make of all of that like managers making comments I guess to the media that, that maybe could be done behind closed doors maybe are being done behind, behind, behind closed doors regardless but uh, maybe the timing is a bit strange it is and I think in the aftermath of you know your opening first game in a World Cup to single out a player as her causing the mistake that resulted in her loss I think it's uh, unfair yet like you said to do it um, publicly with the the global audience really watching it's um, yeah I don't think just as a manager I don't think it was done right I think like I said behind closed doors fair enough but really I, I said previously that the situation was that, that Marissa isn't a defender and she was only back there because Katie McCabe had been caught up the pitch and she had she was filling in for for Katie in that spot so you know it's either a case of I think and obviously Vera Pau keeps saying how they need to get Katie up the pitch higher and that well in that case just do it like I don't think you know I think either player at left back and let her play at left back or, or don't try to have her play um, you know as a left wing and then half the time come back and defend the other yeah. half the time have other players filling in for her you know I think um, you know we saw in the end she she brought on Izzy Atkinson purely to release Katie McCabe you know so I think um, yeah it's just she kind of needs to make up her mind about it because obviously yeah we'd all love to have 11 well 10 maybe Katie McCabe's would still probably stick with Courtney and goal but um, you know it's it's just not realistic you just, she can only play one position so um, we just and like I said we need to try to get the best out of her but similar to Denise O'Sullivan I think she's been held back a lot just to um, so the new American players can or American base players can fill in um, in attack and mid roles whereas Denise would have always played a number 10 spot for Ireland and people say how she's not getting forward as much but that's obviously now she's playing as a one of the holding mids alongside R- Rusha Littlejohn so uh, I do think it takes away a lot from I would say you know arguably our best player that she can't be playing for us in an attacking sense just to, to I suppose make space for the new additions It was interesting like on that point the a few weeks ago when the Vera Pau um, uh, US stuff had cropped up again and Katie McCabe was in one of the press conferences and was like giving a defence of her and was saying that well we do have have like uh, we do fall out at times and we do end up having rows and stuff which I was kind of interested about I presume probably the vast majority of that is about would you just let me get up the pitch I presume that that's a major factor for her personally as well and gets uh, uh, amplified even more when you're at a World Cup and you want to be showing your best stuff that's the thing and um, I suppose with Arsenal she might have a bit more freedom to go forward as well and um, they've a lot of versatile players there who can fill in but I think with us you know obviously the defensive structure has always been the priority and um, you know it just I suppose it is it's a bit unfortunate that at the moment we have you know I would say our, our best two attacking players Katie McCabe and Denise O'Sullivan playing defensive roles so you know we wonder why we're not getting forward as much but um, I suppose that's a lot of the reason is they're stuck in our own half the whole time and yeah from Katie's perspective you know she doesn't make any a lot of people say you know the likes of Megan Connolly is often come out saying she doesn't care where she plays just you know as long as she's helping the team but um, K- Katie has been quite vocal in that that she would prefer to be playing yeah. higher up the pitch so yeah I mean it's it's not an ideal situation and um, it's just going to be very interesting to see if she makes any changes today Can I ask one a follow up to that then um, in light of the fact that we know a draw today could be enough won't go into all the details mm. but could be enough to uh, to get us through depending on how things go elsewhere um, we shouldn't expect then given everything that you've just said given that that we're going to be throwing caution to the wind here we should expect that we'll be sitting back early doors see how the game pans out and um, and see where we go from there don't be expecting attack and play from the off here No I think we'll still park the double decker bus you mm-hmm. know like we always do in front of the goal um, I don't foresee any yeah, change to that I think heading like our ambition seems to be always just you know to try to hold out hold out as long as we can for that nil all draw um, and you know it'd be fantastic I mean I would be 
really happy sitting now. I would have taken it all draw all day to keep us in the tournament and to keep our hopes alive because we can look at then the Nigeria game when it comes around. But it's just like everyone keeps saying, it's just if we do concede, what happens then? That's mm. that's always the the danger. I suppose that we were going well and Vera even said at half time if we don't make a mistake um, you know we'll, we'll get a draw and I mean um, you just there's always a chance of making a mistake when you're especially when you don't have um, possession of the ball for long spells so um, yeah I, d- I don't foresee that we'll, we'll do anything different or radical maybe in the second half if things aren't going our way I think well, we have to throw caution to the wind at that stage but um, in terms of we, we may see personnel changes but in terms of our structure or the, the tactically the way we play I think we'll still be sitting deep in that low block like and mm. um, we don't want to get caught like I said earlier about the lack of mm. um, pace at the back we don't want to get caught high up the pitch and then you know end up in turn then having to chase the game and leaving even more gaps in behind mm. so even when you see the headlines the back of the papers as well may have like show me guts Vera Pau um, you know wanting the players to have the guts to fail as she said in the press conference this week like it, I almost find that so ironic because like, yeah, have the guts to fail play Katie play Denise a bit higher up bring Amber Barrett off the bench like yeah. Maybe in some way, and this is not intended as a dig to Vera Power in any in any sense. But if if we are to lose the game one or two nil today, and and, and those two haven't played higher up the pitch, or Amber Barrett hasn't come off the bench maybe the management are the ones that had not the guts to fail well that's the thing and if she's saying have the guts to fail it's in direct comparison to what she told the team at half time not to make any mistake yeah. you know um, like um, yeah I mean if you're you're telling people to go out and express themselves then you're going to make mistakes particularly um, in the attack and third because that's how you're going to that's how you open up teams you have to take chances um, if it's all just you know like chess and you know where the next move is going to be they're never going to um, open up the, the defensive um, opposition position you know so uh, yeah it's a, it's a bit of an unusual one I suppose it's again it's a lot of mind games like really what's important is what's actually happened with it, within their camp as well and mm-hmm. we don't know um, you know I'm sure they're going to be as best prepared as possible they have um, a rake of staff there you know you can see and um, they'll, they'll have every like I said every detail done and I think sometimes uh, what's coming out you know outside might be just a bit of noise and it's kind of really how they're preparing and the inside that matters yeah and maybe the emotion of the Australia game which was clear you could see the players smiling in the, in the tunnel coming out and obviously it was a massive moment the national anthem and everything else besides 80,000 seater stadium you're playing the hosts maybe some of that is gone now this, this week which is which could be good today that they can just concentrate on the football the whole occasion is maybe a little quieter yeah, and the crowd as well. You know, there won't be as much of a hype around it. Obviously, the host nation and the open games, there was just so much um, publicity and buzz around it that, yeah, now they're almost in a little, you know, it's just for from the outside, it's just another game at the World Cup. It's not a standout game. Obviously, for us, it's a, it's a massive game, so historical in that. But, um, yeah, there's definitely not the same sort of um, hype around it um, on the outside anyway. And um, I think that, that should benefit them, I think, because they can just focus playing playing 11 v 11 playing their own game and just seeing um, how they get on rather than kind of worrying about mm-hmm. yeah the occasion itself should you get your predictions maybe Linda Gorman was uh was very optimistic or you have to say without uh, giving us an exact scoreline she didn't want to speculate in that sense but uh, how do you see the game, game the game going I think it's uh, it's going to be a difficult one I think you know especially when Canada didn't win their first game I think there's a bit more pressure on them I it could have gone to our advantage nearly had Canada won almost um, the first game so I think um I'm hoping for I'm hoping for a narrow win for Ireland actually um, from a set piece, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah, it could be wishful thinking. But at the same time, I mean, it's such a huge game, and I think uh, you can kind of feel that the country's behind them, and I, I hope that they can put on the performance that you know that they're that I suppose get the result that they're and hopefully put on the performance as well. Mm-hmm. What was your prediction, Adrian? Earlier, was it a draw? One all. One all. Yeah. yeah I'm going to go for one nil. I won't sit on the fence. I'm going one nil as well. Yeah. Yeah. To Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> to Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. So hopefully. Exactly. Fingers crossed. The whole country gets behind the team now this afternoon and get a get a win. Not even a draw. We don't even. I mean, if we're in a position that we're sort of talking about the Nigeria game, we're saying oh, we have to back up the Canada. <laughs> to like. What? I know. Hopefully yeah. that's where we're at. I know. But, uh, and a lunchtime kick off too, so you know it's not too bad. A lot of people will be able to tune in. Exactly, I think. it's a great time. Yeah, yeah, people should be able to watch it on their lunch break or whatever else. May have thanks a million for popping in as always.